and then we can do our thing. All right, it looks like we're now live everywhere. Welcome everyone. Welcome, happy Thursday, happy Valentine's Day. If you celebrate Valentine's Day, welcome everyone. And uh, thank you for joining me on this kind of impromptu. I know it was scheduled earlier today, but for me, it's an impromptu stream that I really hadn't planned on doing today. Uh, I'll tell you that story in just a minute, but just for those of you who are joining me um, for the first time, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. And if you're somewhere and the weather's not beautiful, just think beautiful colors. That's what we will be doing today. Uh, so Fraggle Art, welcome. I see some folks over on Facebook as well. Thomas, Anel, Andrew, Victoria, welcome. And many people I've already been talking to on YouTube, uh, Reggie, Nadia, Kendra, um, and Tyrone, and the names go up off the screen. So welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a quick tip. So this shouldn't take too long. I'm going to try not to stretch this out, but a quick tip on how to change the color of a object in Photoshop that's difficult to change the color off. And I'll tell you the story of how I got this topic. I actually got it this morning from a friend of mine. Um, she sent me a text and sent me the image and said, how would you do this? And I said, oh, you know, I did it. But then I said, hey, this would make a great tutorial for today's stream. So let me switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Since I said this was going to be a quick tip, this is not the object. This is not the difficult thing. But I want to start the conversation about changing colors. Now, if you started in Photoshop and you said, hey, I want to change the color of a car or anything, and you grabbed a paintbrush and you picked a color and you started doing this, you found out the hard way that that's not the way to do it. Uh, two reasons. Even if you were careful and stayed within the lines, uh, the paintbrush by default is flat. So therefore, you're brushing away all of the detail, all of the lines, everything that makes that object whatever that object is. So that is not the way to do it. And you probably... Uh, learn that pretty quickly if you ever start brushing a color onto something. So let's undo, undo, get rid of that. I love undo, undo, command Z, command Z. Um, then you might have discovered, well, there's a better brush. And there is a better brush for doing this. Under the brush tool, there is the color replacement tool. That's exactly what that brush is for. And that brush basically works on the mode of color. And you might have tried that. And you might have said, oh, that'll do a better job because, see, the plus sign is going to sample that particular shade of red. And then it's only going to paint that shade of red uh, wherever the plus sign. And if I let go and paint some more, it's going to do the thing. And <sighs> that will get you there eventually. But that is the hardest way. To, <laughs> that's one of the hardest way to do it especially for a big object or something that's complex like this one with a lot of reflections and a lot of detail in it, you'll spend all day with that color replacement tool trying to replace the color this way. So again, this can be used. I'm not saying don't ever use the color replacement tool, but use it for quick, small things and also keep in mind that it is destructive. In other words, you are physically changing the pixels to be that color. And therefore, if you're going to use that tool, you should probably go ahead and duplicate the layer, at least uh, at a minimum. So that way, if you mess up or you change your mind, you can come back. All right. So, but that's not the way we're going to do it. We're going to undo all that, get rid of all that excess uh, color replacement tool. All right. I'm going to switch back to the regular brush because I really rarely use the color replacement tool. All right. So then how would I do it? And this is going to lead into uh, our real example um, in a minute. You have to remember that Photoshop knows not only that there are pixels on the screen, but it knows what color those pixels are. It can figure it out. It can get those colors for you. So for example, if I wanted to change the color of this red car, I've got a couple of advantages here already. Number one, the only thing in the image that's red is the car. That makes my life a whole lot easier because I don't have to do any selecting. 
if I had if the if the car was red and the back wall was red, then I would have to take time and select the car first before I change its color the way I'm going to show you. But because the only thing really that's got any color in this image at all is the car, that's a two second job in Photoshop, believe it or not. Because all I have to do is come over here to the bottom right corner, and I'm gonna move this window up just ever so slightly because I don't think you can really see the bottom bottom. And when I, uh, when I expose these icons at the bottom, you know, where you do your add a layer, add a mask, uh, there is this create new fill or adjustment layer button, and you can also do it from the adjustment layers, but I'm gonna choose an adjustment layer called hue and saturation. Because in hue and saturation, it will not only be able to allow you to change the color of the photo, the selection, or whatever you have, there's also this tool in the upper left corner, which is the target adjustment tool. So if I were trying to change a specific color, I would just click that tool first, click on the color that I want to change, and then start changing it. But because there is no other color in this image, this is easy. I don't even have to click that tool because the minute I start changing the hue, it starts changing the hue for everything in the photo. So it starts changing the hue for everything that's a color. Black and white don't get messed with. They don't get affected. So in this case, this is easy. I can, I can make it the purple car that I've always wanted that no one seems to build for me. Uh, just kidding. No, I don't want to color that color. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, I could just in one click slide the sliders over, get the color I want, and look, it beautifully did it. It changed all of the hue in that image to that particular color. Now, if I get rid of that, let's get rid of that hue and saturation adjustment. I just want to show you how I would do it the other way. And I um, add the hue and saturation adjustment layer one more time. But this time I click the adjustment. Now I can target. See, I get an eyedropper. I can sample what, what range of colors I want. And look, it gives me that range down here. So I can tighten that range up if it's too broad or make it broader if it needs to. So it's selecting the reds for me automatically because I clicked on the reds. Now if I adjust the hue or I wanted to make the car um, less saturated, or maybe I wanted to make the car white. Oh, see, that's how you get to a white car if you wanted to do that. It's selecting those colors and doing it. And of course, I could go in and change the colors just like I did before. Now, that's just color changing a quick tip 101, but that's not what we came here to do today. That was just to kind of get us all on... Um, <laughs> Brandon, you can watch the replay. That's, the, that's to get us all on the same page. Now, next up, I'm going to show you the message I got. So here's the message I got. She sent this this morning. <laughs> she called me godfather, I guess, of Photoshop. Not really my goddaughter. Uh, but anyway, she said, how would you go about turning these chicken wire balls white? The color overlay, color replacement tool, and color range won't work. So in other words, they've been working at it. They've been trying to get this these these purple balls to be white. And um, when I when I looked at it on my phone, I was like, I started thinking in my head how I would do this. And I, I got up and I said, I, I got to go try this right now. So I went over to my computer, tried it, and then said, okay. I sent her the finished one. I sent her the one where I did it. I didn't tell her how. <laughs> she said, well, how'd you do it? I said, I'm going to record a video for you later. You'll be able to watch it, which is this video right now. So, um, Jalisa, this is your video. All right, so now here's the image that she sent me. Again, it's low res. I'm not expecting a high res in a text, but here's the image. And here's the difference. Remember, she said she wanted them white. So, hue and saturation alone won't do it. And also, you got to think about some other things here. There are some purple ones that are kind of the same color. There are some blue ones that are, you know, slightly a different shade of purple or blue. Then there's other stuff in the image that's intertwined inside the balls that you don't want changed. Like I don't want those yellow flowers to change in color. So that's where the challenge comes in. And that's why I said, and that's why I titled this particular stream something that's difficult because this would be very hard to do if you're trying to make a selection. 
It wouldn't be impossible, but it would be hard. And she tried select color range, which by the way, is a way of doing a selection. There's a select color range and you can go in and you can start sampling colors. You can add to it and you can try and get all the different shades of purple selected and then make the change that way. But because this is wire and there's other stuff, all kinds of garbage in between, sorry, don't mean to attack your image, but there's all kinds of stuff in between the wires. That would be very hard to do. Not impossible, but hard. So this was my approach. The same thing I showed you with the car. But this time I have to actually choose color. I have to actually choose a color because there's different colors that I want to change. So um, let's go in and let's add a color our hue and saturation adjustment one more time. There it is. And now that I got the hue and saturation, again, we're gonna use this target, this little finger right here. That's what we're gonna choose. We're gonna click and we're gonna say that that's the color we want. I'm gonna start over here with this shade of purple since that's the majority. And look, it sampled it here. And then I said, okay, well, she doesn't wanna change it to a different color you know, like in the, in the hue, she wants to actually make it white, meaning take the color away. And I was like, oh, well, that uh, sliding this back and forth won't do it. That's just going to change the purple to something else. So I said, ah, well, I'll use my same trick. I'll desaturate it first, try and get rid of all that color, and then pump up the brightness. Now, that's not doing a perfect, great job because... I only clicked on one color and that color changes throughout the image. It's getting me there, but it's not quite there yet. So I could do two things. I could broaden the range a little bit. So if I broaden the range, look at how that's working. That's doing a great job just pulling the range over. But what will start to happen if you're not careful on pulling the range over is that you're, you'll start affecting other colors that you don't want changed. So for example, um, the first time I tried this earlier today and I sent her the first sample, I would pull the other side of the range and look at what it started doing to the flowers. It started making the flowers, you know, I'm starting to get into those yellows and it's starting to pick up that color too. So I, I looked at it again and I said, oh, no, 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 no. Let me do, let me redo it because that's not going to work for you. Let me do it this way. So again, I can pull the range this way. You just have to be careful to make sure you're not affecting your other colors. Now let's say you were. Let's say there's something in there that you don't want changed and the range is picking it up. This would actually be okay. I would be okay with the range doing this, but let's say it wasn't. Let's say that now I kind of got the original color to white, but I didn't get these to white. I didn't get these the way I want it. So I would just say, do it again. Go back to your original image, add another hue and saturation adjustment, which is what I did this morning, and then sample that color. Grab the little hand, click on that other color of blue, purple, darker, whatever, and do the same exact thing. Desaturate that and brighten it up. And you can double, triple, you can use as many adjustment layers as you want. That's the whole beauty of adjustment layers is that it can do that. Um, all right. So, Deb, welcome. Let's see what else we've we been asking for here. Um, Gordon's asking for a feature request. Gordon, the best place to do that is on the Adobe website, not here. All right. Okay, welcome Muhammad from Iraq. Glad you're with us. So that is how I got this image the way that she wanted it. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, you could take it one more step by adding one more thing. Well, first of all, before I add one more thing, what if there was one that needed to stay the same color? Like, let's say, where's my mouse? Let's say this one needed to not be white. This one needed to stay blue. Well, you'll notice that each, um, each adjustment layer has a mask that comes with it. In other words, this white box is the mask for each adjustment layer. So if there was one that you don't want affected by the adjustment layer, just make sure you click on the mask, grab your paintbrush, make your brush smaller, and then you can paint in that one 
back in. You can say, oh, that one should stay blue for some reason or purple for some reason. And the rest can go ahead and be black and white. And if that was being affected by both of those, you could go in and do the same thing on that mask as well, which it was being affected by both of those. So now I brought back the actual color. Um, so the one more thing I was talking about adding, and then we'll call this a day, is I could go in and I could create one more adjustment layer that would give me levels. So if I add a levels adjustment to it, then what I could also do is I could say that I want, now notice it's making everything brighter. So I'm gonna fix that in a minute, but let's say I, she needed those balls to be brighter white for some reason. I can use my levels adjustment, but I don't want everything to be affected. Um, so I could narrow it down. Actually, in this case, I would have to make a selection first. Never mind. I was going to say I could narrow it down to just the balls, but I forgot I hadn't selected the balls uh, first. Um, but you could sample if you needed to make things um, specific things brighter. You could, of course, use masking for that. And in this case, I would invert the mask. So let's do an invert. So basically, I just hit Command I to invert that levels adjustment uh, layer. And then I could go in with a brush that's set to white and I could paint the balls brighter that needed to be brighter. So that way I'm selectively and creatively adjusting the ones that I want to be brighter with that levels adjustment without affecting the rest of the scene. So that's the only way to do it without also having to make a selection. So I can do it this way, take a little bit more time, a little bit, you know, zoom in, make sure you're getting the edges the way you want, but that would be the way to do it. So, uh, a wire fence <laughs> that was shaped in balls that were purple, that needed to be white. Um, thanks for this great example, because I would have uh, never thought of an example like this to use as a difficult method uh, or difficult thing to change the color of. Um, nope. No clipping math mask required in this case. No masking at all required unless you want to, again, affect only pieces of the image um, and use the masks that are actually on the adjustment that you want to affect. So uh, thanks, Jalisa, for sending this image over. This was a great example to show. I'm going to do a broader how to change the color of things topic next, not next week, the week after next. Um, so stay tuned for that. And we'll get into more examples. Well, we may do this one again, just for a quick recap, but we'll get into more examples on how to change the colors of other things because I've shown you quite a bit here, but there's more to learn and more to see, especially when you wanna change the, the, the color of something that is also the color of something else in the image and you don't wanna change the other one. Uh, so we'll talk about that as well, but I hope you got something out of this. And again, I hope that you will have a great day for the rest of your day with this quick tip that took just as long as the regular tips. Sorry, I expected this to only be like 10 minutes, um, but now we're at 18. <laughs> so with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Uh, changing it to gold. Look, I struggle with that. Okay, I'll work that into the broader topic. All right, um, which mouse do I use? I try not to use a mouse, Nadia. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq tablet. But when I am using a mouse, I'm just using my Apple, um, whatever they call their mouse, the Apple, uh, the Apple mouse, this one, <laughs> whatever it's called. I forgot what they call it. Uh, but I typically use a, a stylus. All right, so with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.